Hi, welcome back. In the last part, we learned about the basic essentials that you would require for to set up your budget home studio. And one of the first things that we saw there was the strobe light. Now in this section, we'll be looking deeply into what a strobe light is, into its anatomy and how it works so that you understand how the strobe light works and why is it so essential in studio photography. So let's start. Now here, what I have with me is a strobe from, a, from an Indian company called Simpex, very, very popular in India, and this is the Simpex DT300. Now, doesn't matter which brand of light you have, of course, there are a lot of different types of brands and manufacturers out there, but the basic anatomy and functioning of every strobe will remain something similar to what I'm gonna explain in this video. I'll also be later on showing you the functioning of another brand, which is called Ellen Chrome, which is very popular internationally, it's a Swiss company. So I'll be showing you the Ellen Chrome FRX200 and what you'll find is that it's very, very similar to this particular light. Right, so let's get started with how a strobe basically looks like. So this is a strobe light. Now, one of the most important functions or one of the, one of the most important parts of a strobe light is this particular thing that you see, which is, which is something spherical in shape. And this particular thing is called as the flash unit of the strobe light. Now, just to make you understand this, if you remember in the first part, I've already told you that a strobe is not really different than any other type of flash that you've been seeing. So you must have seen the pop-up flash on your camera, it just comes on top and goes, or you must have seen an external flash like this, which can fire like this. So a strobe, the flash unit of a strobe does exactly that. So if I just fire this, you can see that this is really not too different than the other flashes that we have, but it's just way more powerful than the other flashes that we have. And that's gonna play a very, very important role later on that we'll understand later on when we actually shoot. But just think of this as a really, really powerful flash. We'll also be talking about the power of this flash just in this very video slightly later on. Now, the question you must be asking is that how do you actually trigger this flash when you're taking a shot? Well, the answer to that lies in this device, which is called as a wireless trigger for the light. And you normally get, get this along with the light when you buy it. Some shopkeepers may not give you the, the trigger along with the light. In that case, make sure that you ask for this trigger because what it does is, just like the name suggests, it's gonna trigger this flash. Now, how does it work with your camera? That's, what's, that's what we are interested in. So what happens is you just have to mount this particular trigger on top of your camera, just like you can see on the hot shoe of your camera. And then once it's there, what you have to do is you just have to basically take a shot. When you press the shutter button, it is already synchronized with the built-in receiver that is present in the strobe light. So this is the trigger, which goes on top of the camera and it connects to your camera because your it connects to the strobe light because your strobe has a built-in receiver. This is very similar to if you know how a flash is fired externally off the camera. Right, so this particular piece of equipment is very, very essential because without this, you will not be able to trigger your strobe. So I remember when I had got the strobe light, I actually had no idea on how strobes work. So I never got the trigger because the retailer that I went to did not give, give these th things together. But usually when you buy lights, it comes together. So if you don't have it, make sure that you get a trigger for the light. Okay, so I just want to cut this video short for a moment just to show you that in case the same thing happens with you that you do not get the trigger system along with your light, which usually you will get, but let's say if you don't get, then you can purchase a trigger system like this. So it's the same thing that we are seeing. You can see the left device here is the transmitter, which is the thing that goes on top of the camera, the camera's hot shoe, just like I showed you. And sometimes if your strobe doesn't have an inbuilt receiver, uh, they, you'll also get this device, which is the receiver, which is which will just connect behind the strobe like this. And then you'll just put your transmitter on top of your hot shoe and it's just going to sync your strobe with this and you can fire away. So if you do not get the thing with your strobe, the trigger system, you can always buy it separately and it might look like this, though different brands you know, may have a slightly different way of functioning, but the overall look will remain pretty much similar to this. Now let's get back to the video. Now, if you don't have a trigger, what's gonna happen and what I, the mistake that I used to make was that I actually never even knew that this was a flash unit. So what I used to think was, and this is a very, very common mistake 
made by beginners when we buy strobe lights is that we see this bulb. You see this bulb right here. Now this is called as a modeling lamp, right? So this is another, you know, like piece of, of something that's like a source of light and how it works is there's a button behind. If I just switch this on, this basically turns on, like you can see here. And I can turn this off. And the moment I discovered that button, I thought that's what a strobe is for. That you just switch on this modeling lamp and then you just throw this on your subject and you keep on taking shot. But that's no different than using, let's say, a table lamp. But I never knew this for a long time. So the reason why we don't use the modeling lamp and we use the flash unit is because the flash is way more powerful than the modeling lamp. And that allows you to shoot at ISO 100, which if you're already familiar with photography, the technical part, shooting at ISO 100 will give you the cleanest images. Whereas if you're shooting with using the modeling lamp, since it's not very powerful, you might have to increase your ISO. So the correct way to use the strobe light is to synchronize your camera with the trigger and then fire the flash like this. Because this light is very strong and when this falls on your subject, you'll be able to shoot at ISO 100 and get cleaner images. So that's one of the main reasons. But then what is the purpose of having a modeling lamp? Well, a modeling lamp is there to preview your shot, how the lighting will look on your subject beforehand so that you can see before you take the shot, what is the desired type of lighting that you want? Because a flash just triggers like this when you take the shot. So you can only come to know after you've taken the shot, how the shot is, but that can get you know, a bit frustrating to make the trial and error every time. So a modeling lamp, if you just switch on the modeling lamp like this, oops, like this, what happens is that you're able to see, is the angle of your lighting correct? Is your composition correct? Is the light falling on the desired part of the person's face and other things? So basically you get a preview of the shot that you're gonna take. That is the main purpose of using a lot modeling lamp. So we'll be talking about more about modeling lamp later on when we actually take the shot using a strobe light. But for now, if you're getting confused, don't worry about it because that will be solved later on for you. But right now, what you just have to understand is that flash is what generates the image and we don't really use the modeling lamp to actually take the shot. Now, the second important thing that you have to understand when it comes to a strobe light is what is wattage? 